viewers, Palestinian representatives ask judges at the UN High Court to declare Israel's occupation of their territory illegal, saying their advisory opinion could contribute to a two-state solution and a lasting peace. The request came at the opening of a week of hearings at the International Court of Justice in The Hague. To shed more light on the issue, we are very much delighted to be joined over the phone by Dr. Hassan Wagih, Professor of International Dialogue and Negotiations. Good morning, Dr. Wagih. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm just fine. How about you? Uh, fine. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Wagih, the importance of this um, hearing that would uh, take uh, about a week uh, for hearings till the 26th of uh, February for the Palestinian issue and the ongoing uh, conflict and war uh, on the Gaza Strip? Oh, yes, uh, of course, this is a very important uh, uh, internationally good move. Uh, mm. In diplomacy, we are supposed to continue the path of diplomacy. The path of diplomacy is always tough and uh, uh, making a lot of uh, requirements on us. So I, I hope that this step is uh, a step in the right direction, inshallah. Mm. And uh, of course, it is the uh, it is incompatibility with uh, what happened uh, in January when uh, the request came from South Africa mm. uh, for genocide. But this time, it is uh, different. It mm. is not a request to the uh, International Court of Justice from one country. It is a request from the General Assembly, more than 50 mm. uh, states. So yes. this is the significance of it, yes. Yes. Actually, the court judges are scheduled to hear the arguments from, as you have kindly mentioned, about 50 countries. What are the most important of these countries and what are the most important points that would be tackled uh, during these hearings, uh, Dr. Wagi? Yeah, this, uh, this is very important, uh, as I've said, because it is in the... Uh, for it is the right of uh, General Assembly and the Security Council mm. to request uh, 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 an advice on legal affairs when it comes to uh, questions that needs uh, International Court of Justice. Mm. So they they raise that for their opinion. But the most important thing is the hearings that we are witnessing, uh, the great uh, arguments and the comprehensive and very lucid and very and when it comes i wrote a book about 400 pages uh, on argument and argumentation and i think that the palestinian and not only the palestinians but also the legal experts who represented palestinians uh, raised very elusive very comprehensive very convincing arguments because when you are taking the whole thing it's not only genocide that being there since January, <coughs> when South Africa uh, raised the issue. Uh, but now it is the, 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 the entire business of occupation. And when you are talking about occupation, you are uh, dealing with the 57, 77 years of occupation. You know, everyone and every argument being launched and it's fake argument when, you, when they stop history on 7th of October mm -hmm. and what happened on 7th of October. And this is the conflict of context. Mm. Uh, as uh, people who are caring about the proper linguistic uh, deployment of, uh, of meanings, mm. we have to seek the larger context. Mm. The larger context is occupation. And when you are talking about occupation, you are raising to the entire world Mm. The issue of what is happening in that brutal occupation, you are talking about settlements and annexation, you are talking about all measures uh, that really uh, aimed to alter the demographic composition and the character of the status of the holy city of Jerusalem. Yes. You are talking about uh, uh, Israeli adopted related discriminatory legislation yes. uh, added to that. Mm. Uh, sir, uh, the Israeli occupation is not attending the hearings, but they sent a five-page written statement published by the court uh, in which it said an advisory opinion would be harmful, as they said, to attempts to resolve the conflict because the questions posed by the UN General Assembly were prejudged. How do you see these uh, statements by the Israelis and 
to what extent here uh, uh, by issuing uh, uh, the uh, court uh, rule we, we could see some changes here on the ground uh, dr wagi actually yes this uh, this is the ar argument of the israelis oh. uh, the existential threat and uh, Yes. Uh, defending itself, but they have done far beyond that, far mm. beyond that. And I think that when they are talking about harmful, it, it shows you that they don't want this file to be open to the real fair-minded opinion in the world. Mm. Uh, so I think the, the adjective harmful here means something which could be positive for the, uh, for the sake of the argument of the Palestinians in this mm. hearing of the, the six days hearing. Yes. Doctor, also the judges are expected to take uh, roughly about six months uh, to issue an opinion on the request, uh, which also asks them to consider the legal status of the occupation and its consequences. How do you see that? And uh, why six months, uh, Dr. Wagi? And uh, how do you see uh, uh, the, the final uh, expected um, uh, opinion here to be given uh, to the public. Let me say something very important yes, about please. the bureaucracy. Uh, this is a bureaucratic uh, step uh, in the United Nations. And uh, I, I think that when we called mm. for uh, reform, many people uh, all over the world yes. talk about uh, deserved reform when it comes to this important inter international mm. organization. And I think that uh, when it comes to issues that really need, we cannot wait for the children being killed like that. Uh, women are being killed. Uh, 30,000 people are dying, and uh, people are moving very slowly. And if you can mm. see in the witness uh, the, the word of uh, Riyad Mansour, mm. his voice cracked, and he, 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 he shed tears. And uh, that really was, uh, many people were taken by this, but he is, he is correct. Uh, he is watching, uh, he is saying that the international law cannot protect us. And I think this is a real problem. I think the whole world should, in, should uh, uh, raise up to that level of reforming the United Nations. Because if you if we are talking about this slowness, uh, especially in the matter, um, matters like we, are, we have witnessed uh, a great uh, disaster, humanistic uh, it's a it's a nightmare a humanitarian nightmare if we can uh, describe it mm. so uh, this needs immediate inter inter intervention it, it couldn't be like it couldn't be left like all these kind of spans of time it should be much more quicker than that yes sir uh, we have seen uh, the uh, court <coughs> in uh, the hague uh, uh, the uh, International Criminal Court, and we have seen uh, uh, this uh, court of uh, the UN uh, as well in The Hague, and uh, we have seen many uh, sessions f uh, in the UN Security Council, yet uh, no decision was taken, and all these um, uh, uh, opinions or uh, hearing, uh, after the hearings are non-binding to Israel as well. So how we would benefit from such uh, trials and um, court hearings, sir? Actually, yes. Um, let us say, let us raise mm. the issue or under the slogan of uh, sure but confident. We are confident that this would culminate in the, uh, in the final analysis to something very good. And this is far better than uh, keeping yourself silent or you keeping yourself away from that. Mm. Uh, bureaucracy is difficult. International diplomacy is difficult, but uh, to go uh, one step every time and to win uh, a ground is very important. So I think that the Palestinians are taking the right uh, move, yes. and I think that this would culminate in full recognition of the Palestinian state in the United States, mm. and I think this is a target that needs this, uh, this type of work and this kind of patience despite that patience here is, is a misnomer of what's happening actually. Yes. Uh, actually, sir, uh, these hearings are completely separate, as we, we said, from these ones in uh, that South Africa uh, filed before, and they said that Israel is committing acts of genocide during the current attack on uh, Gaza. Will 
these have an impact on the situation in the Gaza Strip on the ground from your point of view? Uh, yes, I think that uh, every move in the international scene is extremely important and needed hmm. uh, because the issue is having uh, great and terrible regional and as well as world consequences. Yes. So I think that uh, moving in that direction is extremely welcomed. Hmm. Uh, actually, the United States has uh, proposed a rival draft, uh, the United Nations Security Council resolution that would underscore the body's support for a temporary ceasefire in Gaza as soon as uh, practicable. Uh, how do you see that? And do you see here a change of the stance of the United States toward the situation in the Gaza Strip? Or we are just seeing some uh, bluffs here on the ground? Uh, actually, um, the United States should do more than that. Mm. The United States should have done uh, uh, something far more better for the entire Indeed. world by having uh, the United Nations. You know, the United States played a very good mediator when it came to mm. Egypt and Israel before yes. with Carter, with President Carter, who really played an excellent uh, role. And by the way, he wrote something about Palestine and the apartheid. Uh, and the, the Israelis were upset because of his uh, frankness. Mm. Um, he is calling the situation as deep, deepening apartheid in the, in the Holy Land. Yes. So when we are talking about the United States, yes, we have a better feeling, uh, unfortunately, as a citizen, I'm expressing myself, mm. and as someone who really wanted and have aspiration for the United States to play far more better. I lived there. I, uh, I got my PhD from there, and I know how the situation should be more democratic, more fair, mm. more to the, to the right of human rights in, in, in the full sense of the good word with capital uh, H and the capital R. So I think that if you go back, uh, if I take you for a minute for the, yeah. um, what happened in Germany two weeks ago or one week ago or very, very few days ago mm. uh, about the security, the, where the uh, our uh, foreign minister participated yes. in that, uh, Mr. Munich. Samak Chokri. Yes. Actually, what happened in the argument in that conference? The argument is this. Many, many countries, uh, it was about 100 uh, participants. Yes. Many of these participants really expressed that uh, sorrow for uh, the role of the United States and uh, urged mm. the United States to change mm. this move especially when it comes to Europe. Uh, Europe yes. is uh, upset. Uh, uh, Euro is uh, are afraid, also Europeans are afraid from if uh, Trump comes and uh, he said, I'm going to encourage Russia to, to invade other European Union, mm -hmm. Union uh, uh, countries. Uh, and uh, they reiterated the Trump's statements and they reiterated the U.S. policy towards them. And they felt that we will never be a la carte for them, we have to make sure that we can defend ourselves. We should not rely on that. Mm. You know, like when, you know, General De Gaulle, when he said the general says no and he wants to have self-sufficiency when it comes to defend. So there was a great deal of criticism directed to the United States role internationally. Mm. So I think that the time has come for a wake-up call because institutions, universities. You know what happened in Harvard University? Mm. The students, everybody who is fair-minded really stands out for uh, free Palestine, for the right yes. of Palestine, for mm. immediate stop of this terrible, chaotic situation mm. where humanitarian uh, uh, situation is deteriorating uh, unbelievably. Yes. Also, sir, uh, the United States uh, draft tax determined that under any circumstances, a major ground offensive into Rafah would result further harm to civilians and their further displacement, including uh, potentially in neighboring countries, uh, as the text by the United States uh, said. And the whole world is um, uh, uh, pledging Israel not to... Uh, go into a ground offensive uh, again, or to strike uh, the uh, Palestinian side of Rafah. Yet we have seen uh, threats by uh, the Israelis uh, till this moment uh, to attack 
Rafah if there was no deal and there is no freeing of the hostages from the Palestinian side. What's your take on that, Dr. Wagi? My take on that is, is that if there is a draft for uh, such a resolution, the Indeed. United States should make haste. Mm. And the only party who can really stop this is the United States. Mm. Because the United States is a partner, and uh, the stronger partner, and the partner who provided all these weapons. And uh, the United States, uh, I, 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 I really hope mm. that they will, uh, yeah, they, they will come late to the scene. But uh, better late than nothing. Uh, so I hope that the, the time has come and it's too late. But I hope that uh, uh, humanity will have the upper hand, the upper hand yes. in this kind of conflict. Yes. Do you expect to witness a UN resolution, a binding uh, United Nations Security Council resolution concerning uh, a ceasefire in Gaza uh, soon or? Uh, do you believe uh, the, the UN uh, Security Council to do any concrete move on the ground soon? Yes, you know, the benefit of the hearing that we, are, uh, mm. we were discussing a few moments ago, yes, is that uh, when you have this uh, advisory uh, opinion sent back to the uh, General Assembly who requested mm. uh, that kind of uh, investigation, yes. the, it could be, it could come back to the legal, to the Security Council. So this is a move mm. uh, that happened uh, and would help us getting it back to the Security Council. And I hope that if the United States is having this draft resolution, yes. I hope that there will be no veto. Mm. And I hope this will come to a peaceful end after all these atrocities. Yes. Uh, sir, do you believe to uh, reach a solution on the ground uh, soon for the uh, aggression in Gaza and the genocide and the attacks against civilians uh, in the Gaza Strip? Uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, could you clarify your question, please? Mm. Yes. Can you imagine a, a, a solution in the near future for uh, this very alarming situation in the Gaza Strip, sir? Yes, uh, uh, we are all full of hope, and we are taking all, uh, when it comes to Egypt, Egypt has exerted a great deal of effort, leadership, yes. and the foreign ministry uh, played a very, very yeah. good role in trying to contain and not to enlarge the context of this war uh, in Gaza, and uh, I think, uh, yes, uh, we have to continue that effort with all hope, Mm. that uh, it will come to an end, because if this uh, will go, it has terrible uh, consequences on everyone. And yes. I think that uh, stubborn and arrogant uh, people who really wanted to continue killing of these uh, civilians and uh, doing this kind of through wars and through the zero-sum mentality, zero-sum mentality will never work out. And if you are able to, uh, you have already... Uh, revenge it for what happened if we can say that you 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 work for your uh, considering yourself you considered yourself mm -hmm. by uh, revenging but uh, with great atrocities and with something that we are not satisfied with but however uh, enough is enough mm -hmm. let us come to an end uh, reasonable people rational yes. people or else it will be uh, a lose lose uh, and uh, terrible consequences for everyone indeed Dr. Hassan Wagih, Professor of International Dialogue and Negotiations, thank you so much, sir, for your very precious input. Always a pleasure uh, to have you with us, sir. Our dear reviewers, now we'll go to a short break, and after that we'll be back to continue our segments in The Breakfast Show, so don't go away.